So here I have a commercial toilet and when I press the trip lever down, it doesn't flush. These are one of the symptoms of a defective or worn out diaphragm within the flushometer. So the first thing you'll want to do to deal with that is you take your flathead screwdriver to the control stop and you isolate the water. Once that is off, I always like to hit the trip lever again, relieving any pressure that could be within the flushometer. Then you'll go ahead and take this spud wrench, mine's by Milwaukee, but any one of them will do and you unthread the cap. So this is threaded uh, to the right where the control stop is. You always brace it before you start loosening it. But I didn't in this case because I had done it off camera already. Once that's loose, you go ahead and unthread it by hand. Underneath that cap, you'll have a black cap that you can see here. Sometimes these things can be difficult to remove. You just take a flathead and kind of pry it uh, normally I don't get so much slip, but just because I was doing it one-handed. And there you can see the diaphragm within the flushometer. One of the things I will look for to see if a diaphragm is faulty is that black gunk. You touch that diaphragm and you see that black gunk, you know it's defective. I mean, look at that. Look at the black water running off that. It's always a good idea also to take a look in the body of the flushometer to just make sure that the diaphragm came out completely. So here I have a Sloan diaphragm, brand new from the box, exact same piston action, and it just pops right in. No fancy turns, no nothing, just pops right on top, and as does the cap. This black cap here doesn't thread on, it just caps on top. From there you take the chrome cap and you thread it back on. An optional thing is adding some silicone grease to the threads, but it's not necessary. And then you go ahead and you take your finishing wrench or your spud wrench, like here, and you tighten it up. One thing I will mention again, when you tighten or take off these caps, you have to brace them at the control stop here. Uh, if you damage it, you can have an uncontrollable start, like flow of water. And here, after I finish doing that, I like to wipe down the flushometer just to make sure if anything is leaking, I can visually see it quicker. I'm turning on the water now and it is flushing. So that's a good thing, looks like it's working. And then I go ahead and I test that. I flush that toilet several times to make sure that it is indeed working. And as you can see from me loosening that cap, I also loosen the spud at the bottom, which is why I wipe down to make sure I can see any leaks. I take my spud wrench again and tighten it at the spud. After doing that, I see that the flushometer is perfectly operational. And that's it. That's all it takes to change a diaphragm for a Sloan Regal.